I am very much introverted at my core. On a personal assessment that I, that I took a few years ago, it said that I had a seven of a hundred sociability. I'd like to say that I was surprised, but, it re- but I really wasn't. And here's the rest of the numbers. I had a 15 of 100 for social events. I, I struggle in social events. A 40 of 100 for crowds. The only reason it, w- it was that high was because I can blend into a crowd. But I had a 19 of an exhibitionist, which that means that I try to avoid the limelight. And then I had a 36 of, of entertaining, and that means that I'm, I'm pretty direct. And if you're going to see humor with me, it'll probably be dry humor. And I say all of that to say that social settings are pretty stressful to me. And yet, I'm a pastor, and I help lead tons of people and speak in pulpits regularly. And it's not that I can't engage in social settings or even enjoy them from time to time. It just means that they'll be stressful and energy draining for me. So if you take my introversion and you add to that a lack of social intelligence, that was me years ago. It just created a perfect internal storm for me. And I didn't know how to manage those social settings. And I found myself early in life feeling very insecure in groups of people. And I'm going to bet you've struggled with this a time or two in your life as well. And so stay tuned. I'm going to share with you how I work to overcome this insecurity within me. Hey there, I'm Ryan Franklin, and I would love for you to join me every week as we explore leadership topics that will help you get the clarity needed to move your organization forward. Just hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified as soon as I post a new session. And before we get started, I do want to mention to you that I have a great new product called the Christian Leader Blueprint. It's a solid model for leadership development. And if you've been looking for something that can help you or your team members develop in leadership, look no further than the Christian Leader Blueprint. And I want to give it to you as my gift. You can go to ChristianLeaderMadeSimple.com and you can download it for free today. And without any further delay, let's get to our session. I'm just curious, when you read the title of this session, were you wondering why I'd be talking about social security? You can be honest. I'm kidding. See, I do have a little humor. It may be dry and it may be corny, but it's there. When we're socially insecure about ourselves, this means that we've basically turned our thoughts inward and we're sort of overanalyzing ourselves. Have you ever walked into a room full of people and it felt like everybody was staring at you, yet no one really was? And you were concerned about making sure your clothes were just fixed just right and every sprig of hair was perfect, yet no one even really noticed. Your thoughts are are turned inward so much that when someone speaks to you, it sort of catches you off guard and, and you respond in an awkward way. Now, you extroverts out there, don't, you don't struggle with this quite as much as introverts, though you can definitely experience social insecurity as well. When we're turned inward, we present ourselves with a sense of fear and insecurity and anxiety. And guess what? When those things are on the inside of us, others around us can feel those fears and insecurities and anxieties as well. And unfortunately, Even with the best of intentions, those social insecurities will negatively impact our interactions with others. And so overcoming or improving these insecurities somehow, some way, is important if we truly want healthy and impactful relationships, especially in leadership. Here's some ways that that I've personally worked to overcome my insecurities. Number one, work on your own emotional health. And I could preach a whole sermon on this, and I have, because if you're breathing, you presently have 
or you're, you've either worked hard to overcome emotional barriers in your life because we all have them. Uh, these are things in your DNA or things from your childhood of origin that have shaped the way that you see the world and respond to people. And you really can't avoid this. We, we don't come out of our mother's womb with a clear understanding of how to navigate through these things and how to process loss and grief and other, other hard things in our lives. It just doesn't happen that way. 1 Peter 5.10 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us un, unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. After you have suffered a while, after you've been through some things, He will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. The, through His grace and mercy, we have the opportunity to receive emotional healing in our lives. And it's usually a journey of healing. And so at some point, if we truly want to build and nurture healthy relationships in our lives, we have to put some intentional time and work into our own emotional health. And I've learned to do some of this with my day-to-day routines of life. I process various things in life through prayer and journaling. But I've also learned to resource regularly from my personal support team and my counselor to process some of these things in, in life that comes to the surface. And because I spend the time and money and resources to do this, it drastically helps me feel more secure and confident as I'm interacting with others. A second tip is push yourself out of your social comfort zone. It's so easy for me to to sort of withdraw to the safety of my own little circle, establish, uh, especially when I'm tired. And as an introvert, sometimes... I just want to be alone, and I think that's perfectly fine, and it's actually needed at times, even if you're an extrovert, but it's the Lord's will that we engage ourselves in relationships. I want you to listen to this scripture, John 13, verse 34 through 35. A new covenant I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. The only way others are going to know that you're a disciple of Christ is by the love that you show. And the only way to show love is to get right in the big middle of someone's life. And so don't use your insecurity as an excuse, even when it's uncomfortable or or awkward for you. Break down those barriers. Push through those awkward moments and truly connect with people in your life. And I promise it'll make a huge difference. Number three, don't avoid critical feedback. And I'll add, don't unhealthily seek it either. I used to ask for constructive criticism from people um, because I felt like if they, if they weren't being critical about something in my life, then I couldn't trust that they were being authentic with me. Um, it was definitely an insecurity. And I would seek out the bad stuff, and, and, and when I would hear it, it would have a negative impact on me, even though I was seeking it. I, I wasn't really mature enough to handle the truth. And at its core, this was rooted in my unhealthy desire to want to please people. But back to the, to the main point. You really don't want to avoid criticism either when it, when it comes. And when it comes, because it will, just face it. There's probably some legitimate truth to the criticism. There usually is. But I'll bet that it's not all true because the person giving the criticism is probably putting their bias and, and opinions with it as well. And so I would encourage you, take it in, briefly evaluate yourself with it, But then it's really important to just let it go. Let the criticism go and let go of the desire to want to please everyone around you. And I know that's easier said than done, but that's definitely the goal. Because the the more that balanced that our desires are to, to please others, the more that becomes balanced, the more socially secure we will become. This last one 
is probably the most important one, but, but also the most challenging. Number four, don't compare yourself with others. And this is definitely much easier said than done. Um, I wasn't on social media for over 10 years because of my struggle with comparison. And I'd probably still be off social media today if it weren't for me needing to, to use it as a tool with my content creation. But social media many times just feeds our unhealthy comparison of one another. And this triggers social insecurity in people quicker than anything else. We read all of the great things and the highlights that are happening in people's lives, and we wonder why it feels like we can't make it to their level. They have all of these great things happening, and, and, uh, and all of this life stuff just continues to slap me in the face. It creates an unhealthy desire to compare ourselves. And when we compare ourselves, it's so easy for feelings of resentment and worthlessness and lack of acceptance. It's so easy for those things to sort of creep in our lives. And, and this basically puts a filter over our eyes and, and, and how we see the world. It's a social insecurity at its best. And I know you know this, but let me just confirm, you're only seeing the highlights of others' lives. They have a bunch of tough parts of their lives as well. Everyone does, without exception. We all have struggles and insecurities and various risks that plague our lives. It's just life. And so do your best not to compare yourself um, push through those things and get out there and build productive relationships in your life. I know, I know you can do it. The Lord has given you what it takes. And if you haven't had a chance to watch or listen to my last session on social intelligence, be sure to go back and check that out as well. Hope you have a great day. God bless you.